Will AI take over our jobs? Is it already too late? In this video, I'll tell you how you can use AI tools in your design process and what it is that you need to look out for when you're using AI tools. First of all, what is AI exactly? Do you know how we use our brain to think and learn? AI kind of does the same. AI is kind of like a brain for a machine. It can do things like recognize speech, play games, or learn how to recognize pictures. AI technology works by using algorithms, which are basically like a set of instructions for computers. These algorithms use a lot of data to learn how to make better predictions or even make decisions. First, the computer is given a large set of data, for example, text or pictures, and the AI algorithm then learns how to recognize this set of data and identify patterns and relationships. It can then use this knowledge to recognize new patterns or make new predictions and decisions based on this information. There are different kinds of AI and this video is not long enough to talk about all the kinds of AI that are out there, but I want to touch upon two kinds of AI. One you probably already heard of and that is ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an AI that uses natural language processing, which means that it can reply to prompts in a natural or human-like way. But you also have AI tools that focus on visuals or imagery rather than text. Text. And well-known examples of that are Midjourney or Dolly. But I will talk more about these AI tools later in the video. Some people say AI is just a hype. And the challenge that we see with new technological developments is that they can end up in a so-called hype cycle. So people get very excited about it first, then it reaches a peak of interest and slowly people get disappointed or the trends don't follow the expectations and they kind of die down. We have seen several hype cycles in the last years, for example, NFTs or the metaverse. And these are things where we were very excited about it. But now, since we have not seen all of our expectations realized, some people don't believe in these new technologies anymore. Now, the difference with AI is that this is less of a hype because we already see real use cases of it today. AI is already part of our daily life. For example, Netflix uses AI to give you watch recommendations based on what you've watched before. We also use AI technology in our home devices, for example, in Amazon's Alexa or Google Assistant. And what about self-driving cars? They are also powered by AI technology. So as you can see, AI is not just ChatGPT. AI is really all around us. And that, of course, also poses the question, how can we as designers use AI tools in our design process? Some designers are afraid that AI will cause them to lose their jobs. But personally, I think that there is a big opportunity for AI to complement our jobs. There are a lot of tasks that we nowadays do that can be automated, for example, synthesizing information. And this would leave us with more time to focus on the things that are really important as designers, namely building human-centered experiences with empathy. Lastly, we should also keep in mind that a big part of our job is adapting to change. And that is also why I think it's important that we embrace these new technological advancements. Let's go through the design process and see how AI tools can complement our work as designers. First of all, when we start with research, I do think that there is a place for AI in terms of helping us come up with research questions, helping us with the planning of research, or even double checking research data, so helping us synthesize and analyze data. With the Otter AI tool, you can very easily record and transcribe user research interviews. You can summarize and write notes, you can highlight important insights, and you can work together with your teammates in a live transcript. For me, this really made my user research much faster and much more efficient because I have everything captured in one tool 
and I don't need someone anymore to take all the notes while interviewing our users. When it comes to ideation and brainstorming, there are a few tools that you can use for this. Personally, I really like to use ChatGPT to get some general input in my ideas. One of the ways I use ChatGPT is to get insight in general design trends. So I would type in something like, you are a UX designer, research the current UX UI trends in 2023. So what you will see here is that you will get some general recommendations on what to look out for. For example, personalization and customization, minimalism and simplicity, voice-based interfaces. So this can give you a good starting point if you want to start your research. However, as you can see, it will also need a bit further research if you really want to dive deep into one of these trends. So for example, now I can ask a follow-up question as saying, what are the best practices for designing personalized mobile app experiences? While asking this question, you will get an answer that is a little bit more specific and can give you some kind of a checklist to look out for if you want to design more personalized web experiences or app experiences. For example, some of the um, insights that I've gotten from ChatGPT is to segment users, to personalize content, to customize the user interface based on customer needs, to use push notifications. In general, I would say that the advice that ChatGPT gives me is not something that is absolutely new to me or absolutely revolutionary, but it's something that I can use as a good starting point or sometimes also as a refresher. Other ways I can use ChatGPT is, for example, to summarize articles online, to double check on research questions that I have and see if there is another way to phrase them, or sometimes even to extract insights. However, you have to be really careful with this and make sure that you don't feed AI sensitive company information that you wouldn't share with the public. Before we move on to the next one, if you want to learn more about developments and trends in the UX industry, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Another way to use AI tools is in Notion. One way to utilize the Notion AI for me is to brainstorm ideas. So you just create a new page and then you already see this option that says start writing with AI. And when I click on this, I see different prompts. So I can brainstorm ideas, I can write a blog post or a press release, an essay even, and I can also insert different AI content blocks like a summary, action items. But for this example, just let's just go with brainstorm ideas. Let's imagine I want to create a fitness and nutrition app. So I'm gonna give it the prompt brainstorm ideas on how to design a fitness and nutrition app and see what it comes up with. So what is cool with this Notion AI is that it gives you some ideas on features that you can include in an app. So for example, the output that it gave it is to include a meal planner feature, a calorie tracker, a workout planning feature. And these are again, good starting points to get some of that ideas out and to get some inspiration. One of my favorite AI tools to visualize ideas is Midjourney because the prompts that you give it inspire really creative imagery. And it's really easy to create something with Midjourney. You simply need a Discord account and join the Midjourney server. After you've joined the Midjourney server, you can also already see other images that other users have generated. And I actually really like to go just through the prompts of others to, on the one hand, learn how to prompt better, but also to see what kind of images Midjourney already generated, because there is a wealth of styles and pictures and illustrations. So it's a lot of inspiration that I also get. 
get from it. When joining the newcomer room, you can actually see all the people that recently joined Mid Journey and all the images that they have generated. So for example, what we're seeing here is a poster for a festival. We see mixing card on how to mix different cocktails, a city far away that looks very much like a science fiction movie. What I always find really interesting to see with Mid Journey is that they're very accurate when it comes to mimicking certain styles, but something that Mid Journey still cannot do really well is writing text. So texts are always some kind of cryptic language that somehow mimics letters, but not really. So you can also see that here with the posters that it's generating. So I really like to just go through all of the work that has been done here and get some inspiration to write my own prompts. And lastly, if you want to have more AI tools in your toolkit, there are a bunch of resources online that collect all of these methods and tools. And my favorite one is the AI toolkit of Board of Innovation. AI tools should be enjoyed with caution. There are some pitfalls that we have to be aware of when using AI tools. The first one is over-reliance on AI. As designers, we are equipped with a toolkit with processes and with methodologies to make educated guesses that can shape a user experience. Over-reliance on AI can lead to a lack of creativity and a lack of innovation. A second misconception is that AI tools are objective or are true. And this is not the case. AI tools are only as unbiased as the data that they are trained upon. That is also why it is so important to use diverse sets of data to train AI, to avoid perpetuating harmful stereotypes. An example of this is that skin colors, like darker skin colors, can appear overexposed or underexposed in photos compared to lighter skin colors. Another important point to keep in mind when using AI tools is the lack of transparency. ChatGPT can give very comprehensive answers but it's unclear what sources they use. AI models can be very difficult to understand, also for our users. It's important that you have clear documentation on how these tools are built, what sources they use, and how certain decisions are made so that users understand how the system works. You should also keep security in mind when using AI tools like ChatGPT. AI tools oftentimes require access to sensitive data. For example, if you want to create an avatar with your face or get your research synthesized by ChatGPT. It is important to be aware of the information that you are feeding the AI tools. We tend to subscribe objectivity to technology and we heavily rely on predictions and recommendations by algorithms nowadays. How often do you watch a Netflix movie simply because Netflix tells you that you will probably have a 98% match with it? This makes it look like AI gives the right recommendation or whatever AI tells us is true and right. But we have to keep in mind that the AI tools are only as reliable as the prompts that we give it, which is also why it is so important to learn how to write correct prompts. The more correct the prompt is that you give an AI tool, for example, ChatGPT, the more accurate and reliable the answer will be. To summarize, we need to find the balance between trusting AI and using AI's power and also trusting our own intuition. It is still very important to focus on your user-centric toolkit and continue to talk to real users. There is still a lot of value in soft skills and understanding human emotions because this is something that we still do better than AI tools. I think AI can be a great companion to our work, but at this time, we should still stay in the driver's seat. We should still be the ones making the decisions and using AI to rather support our decision making. What I hope you take from this video is some inspiration on how you can use AI tools in your design process today. The cool thing about AI tools is that they are so accessible and intuitive that you can even use them when you're not an AI expert. And I really encourage you to try some of these AI tools out. 
However, what I also hope you take from this video is to be cautious with AI tools. Don't grow too dependent on them, but rather see them as a complement to your design work rather than something to replace your design work with. We should stay aware that we are UX designers. We are creating experiences for humans. And so we should make sure to use tools to design user-centric experiences rather than tech-centric experiences. If you like this video and you're enthusiastic about becoming a UX designer in the age of AI, then I recommend you take the free short course which you can find on the Career Foundry website. You'll find a link in the description below. If you want to know more about how the UX industry is changing and trends for this year, I recommend you check out this UX trends video that we made earlier this year. Apart from AI, I talk about other trends that we should keep in mind as designers. If that is something that sounds interesting to you, then check it out and I'll see you there.